Hi there guys, today we're going to look at a slightly controversial subject, so you may agree or completely disagree with what I'm saying in this video. Um, we're basically it's dealing with lane merging when there's lane closures due to roadworks on dual carriageways. And the controversy is all about should you move lanes as soon as you know that lane is closed or should you wait until the lanes are actually merging at the end and then move lanes. In this video I give my opinion on it and it's probably the opinion that's shared by most driving instructors and most driving professionals. So take of it what you will. Now I've paused the video here so we can see the first road sign warning enough with road works in one mile. If we're on a dual carriageway that probably means to be some sort of lane closure and also a reduced speed typically down to somewhere around 40, possibly 50 miles per hour. So if you see that warning sign, you can just be a bit more prepared for what might be coming up next. So we're going to be keeping an eye out for any extra road signs to know what's happening, which lane's going to close, if any, and if there are any reduced speed limits. For road works, the signs normally will be on a yellow background. So let's see what we can find. Looking nice and far ahead, we can see our first sign here. So this sign is confirming the right hand lane is going to be closing in 800 yards. Now 800 yards is still quite far away so we don't need to be panicking or doing anything at this stage necessarily. Mainly what we need to be doing is looking ahead and seeing what the traffic levels are like. As we get closer to the roundabout and closer to the lane closure we can see there's lots of traffic in the left hand lane as everyone has moved to the left hand lane as soon as they've seen those signs. However the right hand lane is completely empty. So what we can do is use that lane to overtake as there's less traffic there. Now we could have moved lanes earlier as soon as we saw this traffic in this left hand lane much like the vehicles have been overtaking us. The reason we didn't do this is on this video, this is actually one of my learners driving, one of my students, and it's their first ever time on a dual carriageway. So I didn't want to just throw this on them, so we decided to stay in this lane initially, and then I talked them through what to do. So I advised them they can move to the right hand lane when it's safe to, to get round the traffic queue. So we've checked our mirrors, signalled right, and it's safe to go. And on this particular roundabout, it's okay to use the right-hand lane to follow the road ahead as there were two lanes as we exit. We don't need to do like these cars in front are doing and desperately trying to join that left-hand lane because the right-hand lane is not closing yet, it still carries on. So we're going to merge onto the roundabout when it's safe to, making sure we keep this entrance clear so we don't want to be stopped here. We want to be able to reach about here so we keep that exit to the roundabout clear, that first exit. So again, the vehicle in front doesn't need to be trying to merge here. It needs to stay in the right-hand lane and exit the roundabout, as the right-hand lane is not closing yet. By doing this, all that's happening is it's causing a bit of a traffic queue behind him. So he changes his mind and realises he just needs to carry on until the lane merges. So we come off in the right-hand lane and carry on in this lane as there's less traffic. We can see the lane merging here by the blue arrows and the cones. So we're going to check in mirrors, signaling left, and seeing if it's safe to merge back into the left hand lane. The silver vehicle is letting us go. So back in we go. Now you might find in these situations that silver vehicle might not always let you go as they might think you're queue jumping but we're not queue jumping, we're just using the lane with less traffic in. If they don't let you go the silver vehicle, just let them go, don't fight them for the gap, and then see if you can go after them. Here's an example of what queue jumping genuinely is. It's when the lane people are using to get past the traffic does not go the same way as the lane that's queuing up. So here the left hand lane is left only. The right hand lane is ahead and the right hand lane is clear and straight ahead. There's nothing blocking that lane. So by using that right hand lane and then cutting in at the last moment, that's queue jumping. 
This is not Q jumping, as both lanes are going the same direction and the right hand lane in this case is fully closed off. All we're doing here is using the lane with less traffic in, the lane of least resistance and merging in turn. Often in these situations there'll be road signs even saying merge in turn or use both lanes when queuing. To say to drivers you don't need to keep in that one lane, use both lanes and merge in turn. By doing that it means the traffic is split between two lanes, so the overall traffic queue is shorter, rather than all the traffic being in one long queue of traffic, backing up potentially onto a roundabout behind, causing more danger. Here's another example. We've just seen the road sign warning us of roadworks in one mile, so we need to be expecting lane closures and speed limit changes on the dual carriageway. If it's on a single carriageway, it's more likely to be traffic lights and potentially speed limit changes. So coming ahead, we can see we're catching up to the learner vehicle in the left-hand lane. So I advise my learner to move lanes and overtake them if it's safe to. After we've done this, the other learner vehicle actually speeds up. I think it's because the road's now straightened out. They were just going a bit slow on the previous bend. So it's not a major problem though. We're still making progress on lane one. We can also now see the road sign confirming the right hand lane is going to be closing in 800 yards. Now we don't need to panic here, we have got a roundabout coming up and we're following the road ahead and we are allowed to use this lane to follow the road ahead. And there is also more traffic in the left hand lane. So I just advise my learners to stay in this lane and use this lane to follow the road ahead. As we come into the roundabout we can see that traffic building up. So just stay in the right hand lane and use this lane to follow the road ahead. When we exit the roundabout, exit directly into the right hand lane. The right hand lane is clear and open. It's not closing just yet. As the lane starts to close, we can see the cones and the road signs, blue arrows. So checking mirrors and signaling and seeing if the van lets us in, which they do. Canceling the signal and you can thank the driver behind by raising your left hand. In this example, we're approaching the roundabout and turning right. If we look into the roundabout, we see there's traffic queuing up ahead of us. We can also see this by scanning to the right, but you can't see this on the camera footage. Now it's safe to merge onto the roundabout, we can see there's still traffic queuing up. So we can keep in the right hand lane here, and then still keep in the far right hand lane. We don't need to join that traffic queue. We can just come off directly into the right hand lane, and wait until the lane merges. So we know it merges by looking at the road signs, the blue arrows, and also the cones. Mirrors and signal, and in we go when it's safe to because the silver car behind us letting us go. You can now thank them by raising your left hand. Merging lanes when there's a lane closure is different if the traffic is light. There's just a few cars around. There's no congestion and no traffic queue. So this is an example here. So we firstly look for the road signs telling us there's going to be a lane closure in 800 yards. So if we're doing 50, 60, 70 miles an hour, that's too early to be moving lanes. But somewhere between four to 600 yards, we're gonna be looking to change lanes. So we're doing a lane change here, as there's no traffic queue ahead. So there's no benefit of staying at left-hand lane. If we do stay in the left-hand lane for too much longer, we might find it difficult to merge because we're at speed. Similar situation here, you will have just seen the road sign warning us of roadworks in one mile. So we're watching out for those lane closures and those speed limit changes. But in this situation, the traffic is light again. There's no slow moving traffic queue. The traffic's all moving at good speed. So it's 800 yards away until the lane closure. So a bit early to move lanes at the moment, 
But now the lane merge is only 600 yards away. So somewhere between 400 to 600 yards, and we should normally be moving lanes if it's free flowing traffic and no traffic queue. As anticipated, the speed limit is changing down to 40 miles per hour. If we weren't anticipating that, chances are it would have missed that or gone past the sign too fast and end up speeding. Keep an eye on that cyclist on the left. If they were nearer the merging point, then they could have caused us big problems. Maybe we've met the cyclist around sort of here-ish. They're going to be getting very close to us as that left-hand lane is merging. And we need to hold back and give way to the cyclist. But given where the cyclist was, it wasn't going to cause us a problem. We could get easily get past them. I hope this video has helped. And all the advice in this video would be perfectly okay for the driving test. The exam must be quite happy for you to merge in turn if there's a lane closure, providing both the lanes are going the same way. So providing you're not doing genuine queue jumping, you're just using the lane of least resistance, the lane with less traffic in. In fact, the examiner will probably be quite pleased about that, that you're planning ahead. So thanks for watching, and bye for now.